Good evening and welcome to our Terp Talk football show for Ohio State Week. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Todd Carton. And hey, it's a, it's the game I guess I've been waiting for. I waited a long time, Todd, to be 5-0. and And this is the first time Maryland and Ohio State have played in the eight games they played so far where both teams are undefeated. So got to 5-0. and yeah, and, and uh, one other one other interesting thing is this is the fifth game for Ohio State, and I I'm not sure if I read it was I think it's the first time in their history that all five of their games have been played their first five games have been played against teams that are undefeated huh. when they play them. And the funny thing about playing Ohio State is usually you're not undefeated after you play them. What's their record in the shoe? Uh, for the over the past ten years, it's sixty four and three, maybe sixty five and three, because I'm not sure if it counted a game earlier this year or two. That, that's that's not bad. They play against a team coached by Ryan Day in his fifth season overall. It's forty nine and six. They're impressive, even yeah. though they haven't been that good this year. They're impressive, yeah. but as Coach Loxley. And our buddy Lamont Jordan say it's more about us than it is about them. So we'll leave the focus back to Maryland. At five and zero, oh, from what you've seen, are you satisfied with the trajectory in College Park? I am absolutely satisfied with the trajectory in College Park, Wayne. Simply because Maryland's not just five and zero. Oh. It's not like they're barely five and zero. Oh. They they've just to use a term of art, they have curb stomped everybody they've played. Yes, I agree. They haven't played the toughest schedule in the in the uh, FCS, but or FBS. But you know, they just absolutely crushed teams like Virginia, who lost by one point to James Madison, lost by a field goal to NC State, lost by a field goal to Boston College, and lost by, what, four touchdowns or something to Maryland, three three and a half touchdowns, something like that. You know, same thing with Charlotte. Charlotte went down to Florida, who at the time was ranked ahead of Maryland. I think now they're a little behind Maryland. Florida probably a little overranked. But Charlotte was in that game in the fourth quarter. You know, and Maryland just after the first, three minutes when they scored two quick touchdowns, Maryland just blitzed them. So I'm very pleased with what's going on because Maryland has really taken care of business. I like the air game at the moment. I love the defense. Running game leaves a little bit to be desired. And when you go to a place that that's the big tough football of the Big Ten, if it's an air game, sure. I think Maryland has a chance. I said on the postgame show last week, I'll say it again. Maryland has the better quarterback. Maryland has a group of receivers. Might have a better overall group of receivers. The part they just don't have at the Ohio State level right now is the offensive line. And Leah has been shown much more escapability lately than he had before. He has some wonderful spin moves, and he's able to hit an open receiver right out of that spin move. So that part has worked. We'll be back after these commercial messages here on Terp Talk Football for Ohio State Week. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck, the speed of the truck, or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle, you're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the DC metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. <laughs> We want to thank 
thank Rick Jacklich for the sponsorship for all these years. And of course, Viner Fourgates, your hometown Terrapin IT team. Last you know, week. Can I can I jump in here for a minute? Uh, sure. Something you were saying before the break about Maryland's running game and, and something that I discovered in sort of boning up for our conversation that was a little surprising to me. And that is that Maryland is actually 29th in the country in yards per rush. It's it's something everybody, you, you walk out of every game feeling like we didn't rush the ball well as Terrapin fans. You know, Maryland didn't rush the ball well. They didn't rush the ball well. And then you go and you look at the stats and every game they're averaging, you know, five, they, they end up averaging five, five and a half yards a carry. Now, Running against Ohio State's going to be a completely different animal, and Ohio State is even better at uh, yards per rush than Maryland. Uh, they have two really good running backs. Um, Henderson averages almost seven yards a carry. So, you know, but we think our our line is underperforming. Leah, you mentioned Leah and his escapability. How many times has he been sacked this season in five games? You know, I don't have that stat in front of me. Um, dois, tres. That's it. Three times. How many sacks does Ohio State have in their four games? Probably. What's that? Only five? Five sacks in four games. So, you know, I mean, there our line has done a, clearly has done a great job pass blocking. Look, I don't know if Ryan Dago has had a, an extra week to prepare. Is he going to dial up some blitzes and things that gave Maryland trouble and that Maryland hasn't seen yet? That's certainly possible. Ryan Day and his staff you know, certainly possible. But, you know, it's one of those little factors that says, hey, maybe Maryland can hang in there. Uh, Ohio State's been great defensively. It's actually kind of been their defense that's kept them in games more than well, their offense. Todd, the, the days where we went into these games and, and lost by 60 do seem to be over. The Michigan game last year, Maryland was in the game. Yeah, they didn't do too, Maryland did not do too well at Penn State. They were in the game against Ohio State last year. Yeah, well, don't forget, it was 33-30 in the, in the fourth quarter. Maryland was winning three points. Ohio State scored a field goal late, and then they had that uh, fumble recovery that they returned for a touchdown for the final margin late in the game. Not that, that Maryland was going to do much there, but, you know, I mean, so that final margin was a little deceiving. Let's see what happens. You know, Maryland in the four games we've played at Ohio State – outscored 250 to 73 and that that right there not about the past but about this season is i think what all the maryland fans are, are looking to see if you beat the other nine teams you play but you lose to ohio state michigan and penn state is it enough and we're seeing dianu after this that a nine and three season uh, to me absolutely that's enough to, but what me. if Absolutely, too. What if Maryland wins this game? I'm almost, I'm not prepared, probably psychologically, to win this game. The whole, the whole season opens up. Anything is possible if you can win this game. So why would anybody in their right mind really think you can win this game after watching Maryland all these years? And you never win this game. It's been so long since we beat number five, Florida State, way back in the Ralph years. But you look at a team in Ohio State that had trouble with Indiana. Yet Ohio State comes out 23-3, to but that was a close game until the end. They beat Youngstown State 35-7, to but I'm used to seeing Ohio State beat a Youngstown State 65-7. to They do get it going against Western Kentucky, a 63-10 to win, and they go to Notre Dame, and they need a 15-play drive with the young Kyle McCord at quarterback to win that game. And you just probably don't, Ohio State doesn't look as good as Ohio State's looked in years past, yet they're the number four team in the country. 15 play drive and two plays with 10, where Notre Dame had 10 players on the field to cap that drive off, you know, tough to what? defend and against 11. So, you know, Ohio State a little fortunate to, win that game. And and I'd like to say this as long as we're we're talking because I read a lot of criticism and hear a lot of criticism about Maryland's schedule and somebody that we know 
talks about Maryland should be playing Towson, Maryland shouldn't be playing this team, that team, whatever. Take a look at those are the you, you mentioned the four teams that Ohio State has played. One really good team, Notre Dame. Okay, I'll I'll grant that, but a F a FCS school in Youngstown State, a nothing school in Western Kentucky, right? I, I sure. mean, who, who who have they played? Who, Most who have, teams play a similar schedule. Now, Mason's been echoing this. It's something I said after the game last week. You can't fault Maryland for the schedule. Of course, they play two games they think they can win because most big teams do that. So you have Charlotte and you have Towson. All right. But Charlotte was supposed to be trying to get better, but and they were better against Florida than they were against Maryland. And then you play Virginia. People go, oh, Virginia is awful. You just pointed out Virginia – First of all, when Maryland scheduled them, they weren't supposed to be bad. They weren't scheduling a pushover. They were scheduling a rivalry game with a team they expected to be good. Right. It's not Maryland's fault. Indiana, well, a couple of years ago, Indiana had Michael Penix and, and Peyton Hendershot, who plays for the Cowboys, and uh, a few other guys that had sniffs at the NFL. And they looked like they were on the way up. They happened to be on the way down this year. Not Maryland's fault. Michigan State, Maryland didn't have anything to do with the coach getting fired. So you just come into this season of possible luck and you look ahead and you look at Northwestern, coach got fired. Who knew? So Illinois was supposed to be really good. They don't look so good. That's who Maryland plays next week. And you look at a number four Ohio State, they, even though, like I said, they're number four, they're not overly impressive. Now, God, I want to say that there's a chance because for the all this time that we've been on the radio, I've been on the radio with Bruce. I've been the Maryland optimist. Of course you can win the game. There's only two teams that are playing. But so often, it has not been Maryland who's won this. So let me go over why. And it might not make a lot of sense, but it's, it's what I'm thinking. Is this Leah why Maryland not, can win? Maryland can win. Leah has not had that game. He's thrown for 9,000 yards. He's got every record in the book. And right now, he, he compares more favorably to a Scott Milanovic than a Boomer Esiason or than a Gelbaugh, or somebody that's actually gone in and won big games, or Frank Reich, who came back in Maryland and beat Miami. Leah doesn't have that win. He's got, right now, three games and a bowl game to get that win, that when you look back on this, when when Mason and Jordan, my kids, go to the game, and I'm long gone, they go, remember the year? Leah had that great career, and then he beat. And just for that reason, I think he probably does have it in him, one of these days, he's going to have that game when they go, oh, my goodness. It's not only about the records, not only about the yards, but that dude went out there and he won that game. And I'm waiting for that day. And, you know, I, that Kyle McCord drive, they only scored 17 points. But if that's all he ever does, they're going to remember him at home, wherever he's from, for the rest of his life because he came out there and went to Notre Dame and he had that drive and won the game. So somewhere out there, Leah is going to have that moment. Maybe it's this Saturday. I'm sure you have a hundred reasons why uh, I'm just talking out of my hat, even though you're the one wearing the hat. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So tell me why this never happens for Maryland, why they don't win this game. Well, you know, Wayne, I can give you, uh, you know, a couple of other reasons. I think you've already established one. That is that with the exception of Notre Dame, Ohio State has really not been tested yet uh, in terms of the, their strength of schedule. Um, you know, I think that Maryland has a more experienced team. This is Here's one, one thing I will say. Mer this is the best Maryland team we've seen go into Ohio State and probably the least best Ohio State team we've seen trying to defend their home turf. So could Leah have that game? Yes. Does he need to have that game? That's a, It's an interesting thing as I was thinking as you were talking about, as you were saying that. And I'm thinking, is it re does he really need to do that? Does he really need to have that game? Given where Maryland was when Leah became the quarterback and had and his last three years here, if they win nine games this year and win a bowl game and they went from six to or or seven wins in his first year basically to eight to nine or ten this year, 
you know, that's yes. lifting of course, the program. He needs the game. He Scott Milanovic has all these records and a cup of coffee in the NFL, but he was just a bunch of stats. You need that game. Well, you know, I, again, here's uh, um, another reason I think that, you know, we, I, I mentioned it before, Ohio State. I Look, I haven't seen them play all their games. I don't know how much pressure they get on the quarterback, but they don't sack the quarterback a lot. And our uh, Maryland's offensive line has done a fabulous job protecting the quarterback when he's passing. He only has three sacks in five games, you know, and, and Leah's mobility is, is another factor. So, okay. You know, uh, that's, that, that's good enough for me. It's probably good enough for those listening. There's a couple reasons why this could happen, why it's not a complete pipe dream. And for those who look at the 19 and a half and go, well, oh, I say it's fair by 19 and a half. There's no way the 19 and a half is set up by our friends in Las Vegas. To have about half of the money go for Ohio State and half of the money go for Maryland. It, it, they're not predicting the score. They're predicting generally a line to bring in the most money they can bring in. And if Correct. Maryland lost the game, as you said, the game last year was a 33 to 30. Maryland goes out there and loses the game 33 to 30. Many people know that that's that's good enough. They stayed in there. They might even get ranked by losing the game if they play well. I'm not sure how many seasons I went over why Maryland's opponents aren't as good as they could have been as no fault with Maryland. But I don't know how many times in my lifetime we're going to be here, which is 5-0, and going to an undefeated number four team in the country and have a shot. And I'll, I'll, all eligible. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. that that's win. a great – that is – even that, to come out bowl eligible – and Bruce has pounded into me, you, you got to have that quarterback. And if you talk to him about why, he might bring up Joe Namath. He always had a shot because Johnny Unitas, you always had a shot. You always had a shot because you could you could manufacture offense. You could, no could get this done. So I'm, I am going to take my shot saying at this point, finally, we're going to have that signature win. Now, a couple notes from last week. Usually with Lamont, we go over last week. But last week was a really solid win. It did strike me in the in the second half that on one side of the offense, you had a guy had three touchdowns in the first half, which Maryland, three passing reception touchdowns. Never happened before for Maryland. That's Ty Felton. And lining up on the other side, is Jay Sean Jones, who had three touchdowns the first three times he ever touched the ball in college. And nobody, they still haven't found anybody who ever did what Jay Sean did. And at, at that point, you go, this is, you have your all-time leading passer. You've got one guy who scores three touchdowns and a half, never happened before. And one guy who scored three touchdowns the first three times. It, it actually is a, a bit of a special time. And I think the lights are great. I think that it's finally building some sort of tradition as we go in the fourth quarter. They expect to see what's on the scoreboard. You expect the Phil Collins song. And I think at this point, the people who leave early, you're actually missing something. This is going to be, unless something really goes wrong, one of those seasons that you look back and go, this is the best season since. Now, it looks like the answer is going to be 2001 when Maryland went to the Orange Bowl. And that might be a little bit ahead of ourselves. But I haven't seen a defense that plays with this ferocity. Lamont talked about he, he wants more linebacker tackles. He wants more defensive line tackles. But this defense is set up to feature the safeties. What's your take on that? Well, yeah, I, I actually noticed that. And, and it's interesting. Defensive line tackles, I, I think I'm not worried about so much because I looked at Ohio State. Six of their seven top seven tacklers are either linebackers or defensive backs. One one guy, their their nose tackle, who who's pretty disruptive. Um, I think his name is Tyleek Williams. Uh, he's he's disruptive. He gets a lot of tackles. But other than him, but the first two guys are linebackers. For Maryland, the first two guys are defensive backs. So would I like to see our linebackers get in more? Yes. Um, might that be Jay Sean Barham if he's healthy? You know, he didn't play at all against Indiana. So no. So his stats are going to be down and he can be very disruptive, as we know. Uh, so that could be something that that they bring to this game. 
interesting stat uh, that I read also about Maryland's defense that you you can be a little proud of is that stretching back over the last seven games, which are the game, last two games of last year and the first five games of this year, only one team in the NCAA has held all of its opponents to 20 points or fewer. And that's the University of Maryland. Yeah. And you know, they've only given up because we've been starting to track this. They're allowing nine points a game, but more shockingly, they've allowed seven touchdowns in seven games. Yeah. And and the defense doesn't get talked about. That it started see after the game against Indiana started saying that's defense really starting to be the star of the show. You just don't notice them. And I'm not sure why it doesn't have that that brash defense. You know, it's not the Ravens defense. It's not the 85 Bears. But, man, they're really getting it done. And they're probably, you probably have to go back to the Jerry Claiborne era before you see numbers like this. Yeah, and, and, and this year they're getting turnovers like crazy. They're third or fourth in the country in turnover margin. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, Donnell Brown is having a year to remember. Uh, My just, goodness, he is fantastic. He wears number 19. He's an edge rusher. He is really getting it done. And, so, and you've got your safeties. You've got still, if you talk to the scouting type, you've got two NFL safeties, if not three. Uh, you've got Trader, who's an All-American in lacrosse. And he's probably going to be an NFL safety. And you got Bo Braid, who looks like he's that good. You've got a guy who's now really starting to make plays in Glendon Miller. Glendon and Miller. then if if you can believe the press clippings behind them, there's two guys that just don't play yet that you're going to see in the next year or two can play up to that level. Then you look at, at Till on one side and Shepard on the other. And you probably have in that defensive backfield, depending on what play it is, five guys who are going to play in the NFL. It's pretty impressive. Potentially, that's that's true. And I and I think that, frankly, that's the strength of that defensive backfield has created a bunch of the sacks that Maryland has gotten this year defensively. I think they have 13, something like that uh, coming into the game Uh, more than people tend to realize. But I think a lot of them have been uh, coverage sacks. And some of the safeties are picking up sacks. You mentioned linebackers. To me, the guy who's made probably the most difference right now and probably year over year is Wheatland. He's, he's out been there. Phenomenal. He's got two and a half sacks. He's making tackles. He's gotten a lot more playing time. They rotate so many linebackers through there that sometimes difficult if you're not really watching to remember who's on the field. I'm not sure you're going to play. I think the stat was it was near 30 defensive players last week. I'm not sure you're going to see that. This might finally be the game to put you know your best 11 guys plus a few rotational pieces out there and not play everybody. But with Loxley and his in-game development, it's helped. They they seem to have, they being Maryland, seem to have six linebackers you can put on the field. They seem to have, and, and that would, you have Gote, of course, you've got Wheatland, you've got Hippolyte, you've got Barnum, you've got um, S- Jeremy Spragans, and 31, who's a freshman, I think his last name's Miller. Um, all three, all six of those guys can actually play. Yeah. And the safety I could remember is Avante Williams. So he looks like like he might get somewhere in the NFL. I'm sorry, 31 is Michael Harris. And and Corey Coley also in the back defensive backfield, isn't that? Is that is another? Yeah, guy he's from Jacksonville, and he has has not been that good. But he's starting to make some plays. Sometimes it takes a while. Gavin Gibson wears 26. He played a bit as a freshman, got hurt. He's been in and out, but he's back in. Linnell Whitaker, number 17, has some run out there. So th- there's a lot of guys who I think you're going to see, if it's not this year, over the next few years and actually make an impact. But the defense needs to be talked about. They're doing a really good job. If they do this good a job on Saturday, 
I'm just, I'm looking for reasons to say we got a fighting chance. You know, I, I, I'm looking for, I'm trying to also, I've tried to give you a couple of reasons, Wayne, you know, and I do think one other thing that might play into Maryland, we don't know, is Marvin Harrison going to be a hundred percent? You know, they're so talking, you, but we don't know, really. We don't know. And you don't know about Tarheep still, who got got hurt near the very end of the game. Now, they had him out talking to the media on Tuesday, so I imagine if you're going to do that, he's probably going to play. Um, the, the mantra for this year, and it's Loxley has said this for years, and it's just starting to come true, is if we do what we do, we do what Maryland does, it's not about the other guy. Can we do what we're supposed to do? So I'm going to wrap this up on that note. If Maryland, to me, they actually do what they're supposed to do and use all the receivers and sort of replace the running game in some points with short passes and using the tight ends, and they've done that fantastically this year, yeah, you, you got a shot. And I don't think that if they get down, they've already proven they're not going to give up. So, yeah, more than any other time in the whole eight games against Ohio State over the past few years, yeah, this is the one time when you really could get this done. Todd? Wayne, I'll let you have the final word there. You know, and just remember, Maryland's – it's can they get the breakthrough on the road? Because we played them – Maryland has played them very close the last two times in College Park. Remember, we had a double overtime loss that uh, – when Matt Canada – was the head coach. I thought we agreed we were never going to talk about that again, but yes, and, that did happen. And then we had the three-point deficit in the fourth quarter last year in College Park. Can we get that breakthrough and and push, and maybe we'll get Leah's final, it will, it'll be Leah who has the final drive in Columbus on Saturday. And that would, would make me happy. It would make, it put Bruce over the moon and, and Mason and everybody, and then we will deeply regret that this time we didn't go to Columbus. Yeah. But uh, so, Todd, thanks for being on. And thank everybody for watching. Of course, we love doing this. And there will be a post game show, win or lose, after the Terps play Ohio State on Saturday. But for now, that'll do it. Good evening and go Terps. <laughs>